Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to your Acts Ministry podcast. We're talking about God and understanding just who God is, and we're looking at things through the eyes of God, and we thank God for the Word of God because the Word of God helps us to help us to see the way God sees things. And, of course, you know this month we've dedicated to looking at ourselves first. Before we look at ministry, before we look at our marriages, anything else. First thing first is to to examine ourselves, to look at ourselves. And we need to do that. Two verses, two different passages of scriptures, rather. In Isaiah chapter 55, God speaking says that, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways, says the Lord. He says, it is as high as the heaven is above the earth. And then in Psalms, 50th Psalms, verse 21, the Bible says, God says that you thought I was like you. I'm not like you. And those are powerful verses. So we've been looking at that, we've been able to read the word of God. And when you read the word of God, study the word of God, it helps us to understand who God is and the way God does things and helps us to understand that we're not fallible, we're not uh, infallible, that we are fallible. And we studied Nathan the last couple of days, Nathan and David, where Nathan said that, told David to do everything that was in his heart. And, and then God told Nathan that night that David couldn't build a temple. That's in First Chronicles chapter 17, said that David couldn't do it because he had blood. He was a man of war. So Nathan had to go back and tell David the way he saw things. He saw David as a person that could do it. God saw blood. See, and it does. It, the thing that we have to understand: Nathan was not a false prophet. He wasn't doing. He wasn't lying and doing this, trying to deceive. He wasn't doing something trying to get in the good graces of David. No, it's just seeing the way he saw it. The way he saw it, brothers and sisters, it's so important. To, to make a distinction, this is the way that I see it, or and 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 this is what God is saying. That, that's a huge difference. Huge difference. Paul makes that distinction in First Corinthians chapter seven when he says that he sees the way he saw it. A person would be better being single, stand single. But he tells us this was this was not a commandment from God. The way he saw it, he recognized that. This wasn't the way that God saw it overall, even though God gave him permission to say it. So we studied Nathan, a a great man of God, a prophet of God. And I want to study, I want to study, I want to, I want to study Samuel, Samuel. And I want you to see this because this, to me, this is even more profound than even studying Nathan because Samuel is a different type of prophet. He, he's he's an awesome prophet, awesome man of God, and yet and still, we can be off. We can miss it, and in here we're going to see that. We're going to see that it has nothing to do with sin. It's just that we don't see the way God sees, and it, we can see the way God sees in some areas, but because we're not God, we don't see everything the way we should see it. So I, I want to go to 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. And I want to look at Samuel dialogue that he had with God. Samuel communication that he had with God. He had a conversation with God. And what Samuel saw, this great man of God, and he was. Samuel was probably the most consistent prophet uh, when you look at character and flaws in, in the Bible. But what he saw through his human eyes and the way God saw David or the way God saw uh, Elab is it, totally different. Let me read that for you, First Samuel chapter 16. Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and go. 
I am sending you to Jesse's, the Bethlehemite. For I have provided myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invited Jesse to the sacrifice. And I will show you what you should do. You shall anoint for me the one I named to you. So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceable. Samuel said, I'll come in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. He says, Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. So it was when they came that Samuel looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at the appearance or his physical statue, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. The man looks at the heart. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. I want you to just, just see that. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. Welcome back to your Acts Ministry Podcast. And we're talking about looking at the one person we need to look at first and that's ourselves through 2020 spiritual lens for the Lord does not see as man sees God's sight God's vision is different from ours and we want to we want to see the way he sees because his 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 sight and what he sees is truth what he sees is perfect his perception is always right we don't see that. We don't have the ability to do that. And it's so important that we understand that. It's so important that we understand that we in our own flesh, in our own humanity, can be wrong. Even about things that we think we're absolutely right about. Now, when you look at this, you, you see Samuel, this great prophet, great man of God, when God told him to go and anoint a king from the house of the Bethlehemite go and tell Jesse one of your sons is going to be king and invite all of his sons to the sacrifice. When Samuel saw Elab, he's, Elab is the oldest and he, he, he was tall, he was physical statue uh, his appearance everything looked great and Samuel makes a proclamation when Elab comes out. He says, surely the Lord's anointed is before me. Now, I want you to just think about that. This is Samuel. And, and, and the appearance of Elab, the appearance, the appearance, it even deceived Samuel. Because Samuel thinking, hey, this is the man. Now, if Samuel had not been following the leading of God, he would have anointed him as the next king. But because he's, he's open to God, he's open to what God will say to him, God says, I don't see like you see. Now, that's the whole point we're trying to make here. The whole point we're trying to make is that God doesn't see like we see. And we want to look at ourselves the way God looks at us. And now, in, 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 
in the last couple of days, we talked about how Nathan had to help David to see himself the way he was. Because, you know, David saw the man that did what he did. David said he was despicable. He was evil. Evil. But come to find out, he was the man. So when when this great prophet, Samuel, saw David's oldest brother come out, he says, hey, this is, he says, surely the Lord anointed is before him. He said, this got to be, the, this got to be the guy. This got to be the one. He looks the part. Think about that. How many times people have looked the part, but they were not the part. They looked the part because we based everything on how we see stuff. And we're in this mess today based on how we see stuff. I mean, we see the way we look at stuff. I, I mean, and so many people have been hurt. So many people see themselves as unworthy. So many people see themselves as being ugly and unfit and nothing because that's how somebody else saw them. That's how somebody else saw them. And because they're looking through the lens of the person that is putting them down. That's why they have low self-esteem, low self-worth, because they're looking through the eyes of somebody else. You know, when they said beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, there's a group of angels that God considered to be beautiful in heaven. And those angels are cherubims. And, and, and when you look at the, even the beast in heaven, they have four heads. We wouldn't consider that to be beautiful. But our beauty is 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 is. It's, it's, it's defined by what we see in our culture, the predominant people of the culture, the people that are in position to say this is beauty. And that's what we go with. We're looking at things through the lens of other people. So Samuel, being human, he says this got to be the one. I mean, this is this is the man here. I mean, look at him. Look at him. Look at his shoulders. Look at his appearance. Look at how handsome he is. This got to be the person. And look what God says. God says, I refused him. Huh? God says he's already rejected him. Wow. We don't know what's going on here in the text, but God says he's not the one. He is not the one. Wow. There are some things going on here with this older brother that we didn't know anything about, but God said, "We, I have rejected him. He is not the one. I don't look at men the way you do. I don't see the way you see. And God is saying, because of that, he says, he's not the one. He's not the one. And the one that even the father thought would be the one. And perceived that whoever was going to be the one was here. But the one, which was David, he didn't even give an invitation to come. Because the way people see us, how they see us, and, and, and the brothers and sisters, we have to understand that we began to look at our value through the eyes of the people. My time is up, so I want you to stay tuned uh, until tomorrow. We're going to come back and we're going to deal with this because... We need to understand that his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And as, as he said in, in the lesson today, I don't see the way man sees. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. Morning Glory begins at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday school begins at 8.30 a.m. And for a powerful word, join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. At our Conway location, Morning Glory begins at 10 a.m. Sunday school begins at 10.30 a.m. Worship service begins at 11.30 a.m. On Thursday, our Bible class begins at 6.30 p.m. For more information, 
Go to AxeMinistriesOnline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. My name is Frank Stewart. I'm the pastor of Axe Ministries in Conway and also in North Little Rock. We also have an outreach on John Barrow where we partnership with the city and other ministries there. I want to invite you to partner with us in this ministry. I want to invite you to share with us in propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many things that we're doing and we're going to continue to do. We have a vision in mind on how to be a blessing to the community, communities that we're in. So we're asking you to be a partner with us. I believe that God will reward you and he will multiply you. So join us in the Acts ministry in sponsoring not only this broadcast, but what we're doing in the great city of Little Rock, North Little Rock, and also Conway. God bless you.